Hello and welcome to another video tutorial from ComputerGarGar.com. This tutorial will look at creating a dynamic range name in Excel. I have a list of data on the screen at the moment and I wish to name that range. I'm going to make this named range dynamic so that as more rows or columns are added to this list it will grow automatically itself and pick up these new rows and columns. I mean that any charts, pivot tables, VLOOKUP functions, anything I might have that uses this list will automatically be updated themselves if they're using the named range. Okay, first thing I'll do is I'm going to go into the formulas tab and I'm going to click on defined name to create a brand new named range. It's going to ask me what name I want to give this range. I'm just going to call it list. When naming a range, you cannot use spaces, you cannot start with a number, and you cannot use an existing cell reference, for example, JK3. Okay, <clears throat> down the bottom, where it's asking what we're going to refer to, we're going to use a function called offset. Now, the offset function is used to refer to a reference offset from the current reference. So it's great in our example of having a cell range kind of grow or shrink as needed. But it will also allow you to, to offset a reference to kind of move either right, left, up and down as well. It's a very useful function. The first thing it will ask us here, you can see it's not, you're not getting any information like you would if you typed this into a cell. We want to know the starting point. And for us, that is cell A1, so the very first cell in our range. I'm going to put a comma to move on to the next argument, as you normally see. The next one is how many rows. Uh, so in what direction would you like to move? How many rows would you like to move? Either up or down. No, we don't, so we're going to put zero. We don't want to move anywhere. And if I put my comma, the next question is how many would you like to move left or right? or right really in this case. Once again we're going to choose zero because we don't actually want to move. It's not why we're using the offset function. Next bit of information it wants is the height. Now that is something we're using. We need to determine what the height is and that height is going to change. That is why we're using this technique for our named range. We're going to use the count A function. Used to count all non-blank cells. And we're going to get it to count column A. Yeah, so however many cells that have content in column A is the height of our range. If I put a comma, it will now ask us for the width. Now how many columns wide is it? And I'm going to do a similar situation. Now, you, know, you don't have to make both the height and the width dynamic like I'm demonstrating here. You know, in, in this... This last argument, I could have just typed 5, which is how many columns wide it is here. I could have selected the range. Um, but no, we're going we're gonna to have both sides dynamic. As time goes on, this, you know, this may change, and I may have need for more columns or less columns. Let's put a closing bracket on the end to close the offset function off. I'll click on OK. And that named range is created. Now, when you create a named range in this, this style, you will not see it in a drop-down list like you would if you were just to create a range like this. So, you know, selecting the cell, entering the data, and pressing enter, and it will be in this list. However, it will work if I was to type the name in that name box up there. And you can see it will select that range for me. So, wherever I am, I click in there, and it select it. More importantly, if I was to add more information to this list, Oh, the tedious work. Voila. Uh, you see the range grows with the, the new addition, the new row. Just imagine that if I had charts, you know, I had a dashboard sheet that's using that range, that would also be automatically now would have also picked up that new row. It's an extremely useful technique. In, in the later version of Excel, you can check out a 
a feature called tables which would also work quite nicely here the name range no matter what version you're using has always been around as has the offset function and the count a functions used in this example thank you for watching please check out some of our other tips and tricks or other videos on our youtube channel check us out at computergargar.com